It's official. The Olympics have taken over London. If you think that's a bad thing, wait until you see a new exhibition at the Design Museum, which promises to show us the links between sport and art. Design to Win aims to explore the significant role design plays in a number of sports, including rowing, running, sailing and fencing, to name but a few. The timing, of course, could not be better. Or so it would seem before you realize that at least one other concurrent exhibition in London runs along similar lines. The one I'm thinking of is the Welcome Collection Superhuman Exhibition. And that, unlike Design to Win, is free. So why choose this one? Next to me is Mr. Alex Newson, curator of the exhibition Design to Win. Mr. Newson, how does this exhibition differ from other exhibitions going on in London at the moment? Um, well, it's called Design to Win, and with the design museums, we've looked at, I mean, all aspects where design and sport intersect. I mean, I think it, it's very hard to look at design and sport and sort of show where it started and where it's finished. I mean, I think you can see design innovations happening right back at the very inception of sport. So in, in that sense, I think to sort of look at sport is to look at the history of design as well. So I think we really do show that it's happened throughout history and throughout every aspect. I mean, you can look at um, almost down to the equipment that athletes use, down to the training methods that they use, how they're able to use new designs and new equipment to analyze technique and uh, nutritional supplements, training regimes. There's almost no aspect of sport that isn't touched by design. Despite the great concept behind the exhibition, the realization left a lot to be desired. It's not just that I found some of the exhibits repetitive, at times, I wondered if I was in a gallery or in a large sports store on Oxford Street. But hey, what do I know about sports stores? They, after all, don't cater for couch potatoes. Thankfully, not everyone is like me. And here is Chrissy Wellington, four times Ironman champion. So Chrissy, how does it feel to be involved with this exhibition celebrating sporting achievement? It's absolutely amazing to be part of, you know, as a sports fan, just looking at the technological changes and innovations through the ages is, is really, really quite amazing. And sports that I haven't even really participated in myself, you know, rowing and we've got bobsleigh over here. So it's, it's really, really great to see the part that innovation and technology has, has played in, in sporting success. I'm sure there are lots of people looking up to you as an inspiration. Who do you look up to? Um, there are a couple of people. Sir Roger Bannister, who broke the four-minute mile in um, 1954. And I think he showed the power of the mind. You know, he refused to believe that, the, um, that such a barrier um, existed. Um, and I think he showed that no, man, no amount of technology can help you if, if your mind is not capable. So I really look up to, to Roger Bannister and, and all that he did um, to raise the bar for, for sportsmen and women. And I also look up for the same reason and more to Paula Radcliffe. Mm -hmm. um, I think Paula Radcliffe raised the bar for women in sport in running a 2.15 um, marathon at, um, at the London Marathon in 2003 she really showed what women in endurance sports can do and her record is, is still there to be broken so I, um, I have a huge amount of respect for her and, and I look forward to seeing her race at, at the London Olympics. Do you sometimes wish that the Ironman Championship was renamed to Iron Woman? You've won it four times, but it's still Iron Man. What do you think about that? Yeah, obviously, uh, with uh, Margaret Thatcher being called the Iron Lady, maybe uh, it has connotations of, of that. So, no, it's always been called Iron Man, and I'm just proud to be four time Iron Man world champion. See it for yourselves. The exhibition is on until the 18th of November.